Mr. Crispin here today with part two of machining my loco cylinders. Some of you may have seen this cardboard model in my uh, last video, but for anyone that hasn't, this is a cardboard life size model of uh, what my cylinder blocks should look like when they're finished. This will be made out of mild steel, and into this will go the liners that I made in part one. Uh, this bigger liner here for the main cylinder board and a smaller liner uh, for the valves. Now apologies to those of you who uh, like seeing every step but I've already made some progress towards the finished cylinders. So at a friend's house I took a, a big face mill on a large milling machine and uh, face milled a block leaving the block oversized in all dimensions initially. I then uh, used a four-jaw chuck on a big lathe and drilled these two holes on the size and uh, once I finished that I surface ground the back up. Now the surface ground face is uh, going to serve as the datum for the rest of these uh, machining operations as is this face which I've uh, machined with an end mill here in my workshop so this is going to be the datum corner. Um, and I'm going to bore out these two holes to accept the cast iron liners shown over here. I'm going to lock tight the liners in and then bore the liners. Now I could probably get away with reaming this one and using a normal boring bar for this bore but a better way to do it in my opinion is to use a between centre boring bar which some of you may uh, be familiar with but this is basically a stainless steel bar which I've made uh, and a piece of high speed steel which I've ground up and uh, down the bottom we've got a M6 tapped hole and that runs at 45 degrees into a 10 mil bore to accept the high speed steel and then we've got an M4 grub screw to lock it in place and with this bar I'm basically going to um, traverse the cylinder block along into the bar which will be remaining still. This is spinning of course but we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Uh, there's one bar for the big bore and uh, one bar for the little bore. So let's get going. So for line boring first off I'm removing the top slide and tool post. So basically in this setup I've got a fixed bar. So if I'm going to mount my uh, cylinders on here, I need some way of getting them in the right position uh, so that when I move in and out, it bores the hole in the right place. Height-wise though, it's fixed. I've got no way of doing that with any kind of um, control. So what I did was I took a piece of bar, put it in a three-jaw chuck, machined the diameter, and then used slip gauges to find the distance from this surface to the underneath of the diameter that I just machined. Then I measured the diameter, added the radius on to the slip gauge stack and that gives you the distance from this surface to the centre of the spindle. Using that number and using the given dimensions to the bore centre lines I was then able to work out for each bore how far off this surface it would have to be. And what I did was I ground up some custom uh, bits of packing, just uh, normal mild steel. And when that sits on those, that puts this bore at the right height. In other words, that puts the theoretical centre of this bore in line with the lathe centre height. And likewise for the smaller bore, I've got some thinner packing pieces and they can sit on there and take me to the right height for the smaller ball. So that sorts me out position wise but I, but I still need some way of clamping it down and also I'd like something to be able to push the blocks up to so I can swap them over or take the blocks away and do something and bring them back. I've taken another block of mild steel, I've ground the bottom up, I've just cut a recess in there and then I've ground the remaining bits up to give me two nice square and flat faces. Then obviously I've drilled and tapped some holes for these studs and uh, put some holes into these cap heads. And that should sit there. And uh, 
will bolt down into the T-slot and I can clock across these two faces to get it parallel to this axis which is the Z-axis. Then at the other end I'm just going to have another block with more studs in it and that will give me uh, just something to attach a clamp to. This isn't going to be responsible for any alignment, it's purely a clamping block. So the cylinder will then sit in there using the differing packers to get the different centre heights. I can push the datum face up against the ground pads and then over the top I can place two clamping pieces and lock those down with some nuts. Those four studs I can lock down. And between all this I reckon that will be a pretty rigid boring setup. So uh, I'll take some time now to set all this up properly and clock that uh, backstop in as I've just described. Having installed the two blocks, one thing I need to do is work out where to initially position the cross slide. Now I just want the rough positioning really because once I've bored it uh, or taken a skim I can remove this, measure it on the surface table accurately and then reinstall it because really I'm interested in the distance on this datum face and that's difficult to measure to in the fixture so uh, that's why I'm going to be measuring it on the surface plate but to set up initially what I'm going to do is take this off and put an angle plate up against here and then I've got an edge finder in the spindle and I can edge find up to there and that will give me a good guide to go by to start with. So I'll take it at that for now. I've mounted the block in the uh, cradle shown earlier and I've taken a light skim. Now what I'm going to do is advance the tip 40 thou, so that will be a 40 thou radial cut increasing the diameter by 80 thou or 2 mil. So first up I'm going to measure this distance from the tip to the back of the bar. And I've got 1486. So, so I'm going to add 40 to that, which gives me 1526. So I undo the gub screw and then I can advance uh, from underneath. OK, I'll take that, get the grub screw up. OK, so we're ready to cut. Spindle goes on and you can see the tip now rotating. And for the purpose of this I'll just hand feed it in. And you should see the cut appear on the block. Can you see the diameter we're cutting now? So I'll uh, let this cut all the way through. Right, so uh, having finished that, I can take this off and measure it. The bar sits between centres, so I can just take this in and out as I please and reinstall it in the same position.
I'm back from the lathe now and I'm pretty happy with the bore. It's come out with a nice surface finish and it feels very uniform. Um, next up I want to check the position of this bore before I go any bigger. We're still undersized by a, a few mil at the moment. What I want to do is check the position of the centre of this bore in relation to this datum corner over here. Uh, in other words, that dimension and that dimension. And to show you how I'm going to do this one first off, I've made a little drawing. So uh, that hopefully will make sense. I've got one and a half inches from the centre line to the face and uh, that is equivalent to the radius plus whatever I'm about to measure. And uh, if what I'm about to measure and the radius add up to one and a half, then I'm happy with the position. If it doesn't, then I need to adjust the setup on the machine slightly to bring uh, all these numbers to tie up. So, first up, we need to know the radius. So, first up, to measure the bore without getting my hands in front of the camera. So, the bore there is 1747. And I'll check that on the other side as well. Yep. So now what I'm going to do is halve that measurement to give me the radius. And that'll give me the thickness that that should be. Then I'll make a slip gauge stack of that correct thickness and then with a clock measure the error. So hopefully you've worked out what I'm doing now. I'm going to clock across the top of the slip gauges and that should be equal to the bore or the low point of the bore. That's a clock zero from my angle, it might be a little out for you. Okay we're about plus one sound. Hear the difference? Spin the part round and see what we like on the back. About the same, it's only the low point I'm interested in. About to sour again. So this is an easy fix, all I have to do is when I put the uh, component back down on the lathe I'll put some one thousand shim stock in underneath it and that will give me the required outcome. Now we're off camera what I'm going to do is the same thing for the other dimension. If we zoom out, I'm going to lay a parallel under there, put my slip gauge stack on here and then I can measure true to the date and face. So I'll do that. I'll make any adjustments in the x axis on the lathe cross slide, and then we can continue to bore this until we get a nice fit with this. I've made the adjustments and remounted the workpiece, so now we can take some more metal out. And uh, there's about a hundred thousand to come out on diameter. Um, so I reckon I'll take two lots of 40 thou, which will take 80 thou out, and then I've got 20 thou left to go. So off camera now I'll bore this out until I've got the suitable clearance and then we'll reconvene. Here comes the liner. It 
about um, one and a half to two thou clearance in this and then we have one liner so I'll wait for that to set well I'm going to call it quits here for part two I've got two sleeved bores and in the next video I'm going to bore these out to the final size and I'll show you how I ensure they both come out the same size uh, I'm going to bore these out to accept a different liner and I'm going to face these faces off um, perpendicular to the bore on both blocks so uh, then we can start moving on to milling and eventually putting this uh, liner in and uh, finishing off so uh, other than that hope you've enjoyed this uh, session and uh, see you on the next video